Hi and welcome to this new video. Today I'm in a bit of a different location because you can see we have a huge package here. Inside of this, you could probably already read it from the title, is the brand new Quadral Breeze 2, the newest, I don't know, flagship portable speaker from Quadral. And today we are going to unbox it on this table here. So you can see the packaging is actually pretty big. And let's take a look inside. It is yeah, quite big, I think. I've never seen it in real life. Oh, the packaging actually is quite small. I expected it to be, I don't know, as big as the IY Exos 9. But it actually should be on the level of a Harman Kardon Go Play. And also the packaging looks a bit, I don't know, crappy or something um, because it's a bit damaged here. But anyways, I think it is about the speaker inside. So now let's take a look on it. So now let's open up this package here as well. There's a lot of tape on it. So we will have a hard time cutting it. I think I will just fast forward it now. So here it is now. And I got the white version. The black one, I think, took five uh, weeks to deliver. And um, yeah, I obviously wanted it quicker. So let's take it out here. Okay, I think it's very tight. Let's maybe turn the packaging around. And everything falls out. So now here we just have those the bags here keep it dry or something. We have the cables. This is, I think, yeah, auxiliary cable and a charging cable. Also, uh, some manuals, uh, something uh, something for Spotify. Uh, yeah, I don't really use it, but maybe this is helpful for you. And let's take it out of this kind of, uh, I don't know, protection here. And it even comes in this nice kind of Fabric reminds me of the packaging from the Zeppelin Wireless. And one of the speaker grills already came off. Really nice that you can take them off, I didn't know that. And okay, it's already falling apart. And let's throw this away and organize this speaker here. So here it is. This is the, I think, uh, yeah, rubber feet and one of the grills. So it already comes uh, pre, um, I don't know, pre disassembled for you. And yeah, let's maybe put this back on here somehow. Hmm. Very weird. I don't know. Let's figure it out later. I already read some customer reviews saying that the quality is really bad, that they had to return it. I'm not sure about that, but uh, so far <laughs> it already fell apart a bit. Let's also place it the right way. And now I think we can take a nicer look at it. And I have to say, yeah, it looks pretty nice. Uh, the driver here, yeah, feels quite high quality. So far you cannot say anything, but it's also a pretty yeah, hefty speaker but it is uh, definitely smaller than I expected. I expected it to be much bigger. But of course, Quadrat is a very nice um, German hi-fi company. They're known for making very big, good speakers. I also own a system by my own. Um, and now I'm of course very excited for this speaker here to see how it sounds. I even think this is some kind of wood material. Um, yeah, so it should be really high quality and maybe also good sounding. The quality doesn't seem to be that great, um, but a little bit of glue could fix this. Or maybe they also want you to take it off. So maybe you want to place it horizontally on the other feet right here. Uh, yeah, but now let's switch up the room and go into my, I don't know, hi-fi audio room. And now we will make a sound check. So now let's check it out even more and have a short listen. Um, I have already recorded this part and I really was a bit unfair about the speaker. Um, I said in the video, or in the first video, um, that it doesn't sound good at all, it sounds uh, way too hollow, 
but actually when listening to it with my own tracks after I think yeah half an hour or something I started to really like it. I also tried it out at maximum volume and I found out some pretty interesting stuff. Also um, I did some measurement so I can already tell you that it measures nearly flat. On low levels there's no bass adjustment, on higher levels the bass remains the same though and on maximum volume there is no bass reduction also no compression so very similar to a FIFA speaker. In my opinion I think that there is some slight emphasis on um, mids which sound very clear but also a slight emphasis on the upper bass from about I think 150 to 500 hertz and this makes the speaker sound a bit hollow sometimes but of course there's also some nice deep bass it reaches down to about 47 hertz which I think is quite nice. Also those things here which I called feeds in the unboxing only were for trans transportation so you can easily remove them there also doesn't need to be any glue because those are just things you can, I don't know, throw in the trash because they were for transportation only. And it has some nice other rubber feet at the bottom here, which also prevent it from moving around or anything. And now it actually looks pretty elegant. I think in black it would look even nicer. But like I already told you, black wasn't available at the moment and white also really matches my other speakers here. And now let's also check out all of the buttons. So at the top you have your on and off button, um, I think a mode switch, volume buttons because volume isn't in sync and also some presets for the Wi-Fi as it has I think Wi-Fi built in. I think you even have your own app so this is a really nice kind of I don't know feature pack you get here for $450. I think it is comparable against something like the Harman Kardon Go Play, the Klipsch Cam C3 uh, or even the FIFA Copenhagen which is nearly twice the price. So it really is a, I think, good speaker for this amount of money, maybe even the best. If the battery life is good now, um, yeah, it might be the perfect party outdoor speaker. And it really uh, shouldn't be underrated when it comes to sound and features. So at the back you have, uh, yeah, of course, your logo. You're charging out so you can power your device if the battery's dead. A Bluetooth button for pairing, a VPS button to log into your Wi-Fi, an auxiliary port, a service port, two bass ports, which don't fart at max volume, although the speaker can play really loud. Uh, on and off switch so um, if you want to prevent it from self-discharging you just really um, unplug the battery or yeah turn off this uh, power switch here because it has a second power button right here for standby and also a um, power cable so it has the power brick already built in of course no micro usb charging which would be uh, yeah i think <laughs> a bit useless here because it would take forever to charge it but now let's turn it on Maybe we will also see USB type C soon here with maybe some kind of dash charge technology built in from OnePlus and then you can charge those huge speakers just with one USB type C cable. But for now you have to charge it via this other port. So now let's connect to it. I think it connects automatically. Yes. And let's try out a track here. And also it becomes a bit more powerful when it is plugged in, um, but for now we will leave it battery powered as it is a portable speaker and I want to present it to you without a power cable and it becomes about 5 or 10% louder and more powerful when you plug it in. But for now we will leave it like this and I will start with a simple pop track because I think it really shines here. Some nice new days. So tell me what your aim is. You say I'm wrong, so tell me why you're saying I'm a killer with a smile. Oh, some nice stereo due to the sweeters. So 
as you can hear it sounds very powerful. Don't wonder this already is about 80% volume but my gain is also turned down to about 35, usually I record at 50 just because the speakers which we will be trying out today are very powerful and I will only play them at higher volumes. Next we will also check it out against the FIFA and play it at normal levels for one time because it only shines over 50% volume because then the bass and all of the I don't know, power kicks in and under that you should rather, I don't know, go for something like the FIFA Helsinki as it sounds a bit more, um, I don't know, powerful at lower levels and on higher levels the Quadral really shines um, and especially on, I don't know, 90% volume it still keeps a um, nice bass and sounds very powerful. So next let's check it out against the FIFA Helsinki. You can place it on top here. And the FIFA goes for about $400, so it is only about $40 or $50 between them. I think you can already find the Quadral for about $420 or $430. I'm not sure if it is available outside of Germany. If not, it would be very sad as it is a very nice sounding speaker, but maybe you can even import it or something. So next, let's check out another pop track. The FIFA is playing in normal mode. To avoid any distortion. So now we are at about 70 or 65% volume and you can hear that the FIFA, I don't know, sounds quite a bit more dynamic, a bit more, I don't know, uh, hi-fi like, also treble is much clearer as well as the mids, but I think that the Quadral isn't even that bad and when it comes to really modern music or even house tracks, the Quadral of course has an advantage with the big main drivers built in and of course if we will crank it up louder now, you will also hear that the Quadral keeps more bass and sounds more relaxed than the FIFA. So let's check out another track. On max volume they are almost equally loud so there is not that much difference despite the size difference so you can see the Helsinki is about four times smaller than the Quadral here and it still manages to be almost as loud but you could hear that despite um, the Quadral costing only $50 more it sounded uh, yeah much more powerful on higher volumes but of course the FIFA has the typical I don't know FIFA advantage because it sounds super clear the mids were just very spacious as if the singer was right in front of you. The Quadral cannot deliver this, but I think the Quadral also has a different approach. It isn't really meant uh, to be a hi-fi speaker, although it measures nearly flat. It is rather meant to be some kind of uh, Harman Kardon go play killer and not a FIFA Helsinki killer here. Um, yeah, I'm also excited for the smaller version. I haven't ordered this one yet, the Quadral Breeze 1. This might be more comparable to the FIFA Helsinki. Also, um, it is only $300 and half the size of the Quadral Breeze 2. But now, oh, yeah, let's maybe also try a jazz track to make it even fairer, or to make it even more fair. So let's check out this jazz track here. <laughs> Feel like I'm gonna go crazy Watch a minute's falling 
So the quadrille really sounds average when it comes to jazz music or maybe even a bit, um, I don't know, hi-fi like, but of course against Afifa Helsinki, which is simply the king in this class when it comes to hi-fi sound. It doesn't really have a chance, despite the uh, yeah way bigger body. But of course, you cannot expect this. It simply has a different approach. It wants to sound very powerful, which it of course does. Also, especially on high levels, it really keeps all of the bass and sounds uh, way more powerful than, of course, this very small FIFA Helsinki here. And of course, if you only listen to modern music, this is the way better deal for yeah a bit over four hundred dollars than the Helsinki. But if you are looking for a speaker which sounds great with I don't know jazz or acoustic music on normal levels, just go with the Helsinki. Next, let's maybe check out the next bigger model, or yeah, two models bigger than the Helsinki, the FIFA Copenhagen. And this should be even more comparable than the Helsinki, especially when it comes to um, modern music. It doesn't sound as clear as the Helsinki, so those two are actually quite similar. On max volume, which I won't try now because it will be too loud, they are equally loud, um, and when both are plugged in, the breeze is about 5% louder than the Copenhagen and also sounds a bit clearer, especially in the trebles and the mids. It simply performs a bit uh, clearer than the Copenhagen and doesn't sound as soft and as dampened. Now let's connect to the FIFA again, and let's check out another modern hip-hop track. And always take some time for the FIFA to recognize that it is connected to a speaker. And let's try it out now. Also, volume isn't in sync. Bass is much nicer on the Copenhagen here. Remember all the times he tried to take me back Pick me up from school and told me They need a pack And I'll be on the plane And if you didn't advise So I'll probably never see again You've been my shelter through his reign Always something with the FBI Something with the police or but I would even prefer the breeze over the quadral, um, the breeze over the Copenhagen here, simply because it sounded a bit clearer. The Copenhagen only sounds clear if you stand up or sit higher, maybe like this or something, because the tweeters are placed here and not at the front, just like um, the Oslo would have it. So now it sounds a bit covered compared to the quadral, and if I would stand up. The quadrat would sound covered again, so it is very hard um, to make them equal sounding. But I personally prefer the quadrat here, but of course, if you really like this heavy bass, the Copenhagen is the better one here, as it really offers some nice bass kick. But keep in mind, it is $700, and this one is only 420 It also has some very strong self-discharging going on, so maybe the quadrat is the better overall package for you. Next, let's maybe check out um, another pop track, which we have already used before.
again prefer the quadrale here, it sounded just a bit more balanced, again treble was a bit clearer, especially the mid, sometimes this kind of emphasis on the mid range can be nice, sometimes it sounds a bit rounding um, with some jazz tracks, but sometimes it can also sound very clear, especially on max volume, this warm kind of bass character of the Copenhagen makes it sound a bit out of control and the quadrale really always stays balanced and under control sounding. So if you crank both up to maximum volume or over 90%, I think that you will prefer the quadrale simply because it sounds a bit more controlled. It has a bit less bass, but simply sounds clearer and more punchy than the Copenhagen also. Um, with less distortion, with uh, yeah, heavier tracks. Next, let's check out one more very heavy track, also at some higher levels, to see how they perform with those bass kicks here. <laughs> Again, both were very similar sounding, but I still preferred the Quadral. I think it is a very nice sounding speaker for modern music. With jazz music, we could hear that it sometimes sounded a bit too hollow with this um, kind of mid-range or upper bass boost, even compared to the Copenhagen or the Helsinki. But as long as it comes to, I don't know, modern music, it really performs nice, especially on high volumes. On normal levels, I would maybe even prefer the Copenhagen due to the warmer, more full-bodied bass character. But on higher levels, the breeze simply sounds clearer, better mids, better sound stage. The bass was more precise, but still reaching um, almost even lower than the one on the Copenhagen. So it is a really nice package. It also has a nicer battery life built in and in my opinion also feels a bit more sturdy in the hand, although both are very nicely made. So overall the Breeze definitely is the better package for the money and they also are equally loud with the Breeze again sounding a bit clearer on max volume and with less distortion. Next let's also check out the jazz track here. <laughs> And here again this warm kind of bass character from the Copenhagen makes it sound a bit, um, I don't know, bigger. Somewhere in the middle, I'm somewhere in between. Crack the code and solve the riddle, trying to find the real me. Somehow, I knew I could beat it, I knew I had the antidote. My friends, they wouldn't listen, though I want to show them you can pave the way and you can make it. I still really like the Copenhagen with this track, although the breeze could perform clearer in the mids and in the treble again. With the Helsinki it was quite the opposite, so the breeze couldn't sound as spacious and as realistic, but now compared to the Copenhagen, um, it doesn't sound as warm as the Copenhagen, but still. Those, um, I don't know, deep bass kicks sounded very nice on the Copenhagen. It sounds like it is, I don't know, three times bigger than it actually is. So the Copenhagen still is a great speaker if you own it. You should definitely not switch to the Breeze, but if you want to make a decision and you want a big speaker which can perform good on higher levels, I would go for the Breeze. Uh, it even sounded clearer on this track, and I think this is very important. But of course, if you only like bass on normal levels, um, you can go with the Copenhagen or even the Helsinki as they both sound very similar on normal levels. Okay, so I think this is it from the Copenhagen and I have one last speaker. Also the Copenhagen sounds more powerful when it is plugged in and if you plug both in, um, the Quadral is about 5 or 10% louder and again clearer sounding. Next let's check out uh, the iyx 9, really huge speaker, even compared to the Breeze which already is a big speaker. Let's turn it on and let's check out some jazz tracks and also some hip hop. I will start with the hip hop track again and you can see the equalizer is tuned how I want it, a bit clearer with a bit more bass and yeah, let's start with this hip hop track again here. Was it 
always smiling from day one, but her attitude changed the day she got her first son. Learned the secret technique of hate evasion, and surprised she didn't freak out when everything out of his mouth seemed a little Asian. Who was then a mother looking down from the space station? Who them I learned I could be great, depending on which direction that I face, son. Happiness only takes one, but when you got two, that's less. Lose a more clues, man, I might not make it. Amount of times I hear snooze. Wake up, wake up, Tyler, you ain't got nothing to lose. Came from the same stuff as the bruise. Now, we free from he who shall not be named. Dude, never been around where nothing could be gained. So, he can wallow in his shame. Was I could have swallowed, but we took it the same. So you can hear that the quadral wasn't even that far off. Sometimes with some tracks it is missing this uh, warm kind of sub-bass level bass compared to the Iowa or even the Copenhagen. And then you think that the Iowa or the Copenhagen simply sounds a bit more powerful, a bit bigger because they actually are a bit bigger sounding um, on normal levels. But then when you switch to the breeze you also start to enjoy this one as it has some nice deep bass but it isn't really pushed forward so you have some kind of very nice hi-fi like sound and not some kind of boomy character which the um, Iowa has. Next let's check out the jazz track again. Now the quadrille should sound much better. Nice um, bass drum is super great on the Iowa, but the rest is better on the breeze. Somewhere in the middle, I'm somewhere in between. Crack the code and solve the riddle, trying to find the real me. Somehow I knew I could beat it. Knew I had the antidote. My friends they wouldn't listen, though I wanna show them you can pick the way and you can make it. Promise don't look back no more It's somewhere in the middle I'm somewhere in between I start to disassemble He's walking So you could hear that the um, breeze sounds way clearer, but again, um, the bass was a bit nicer on the Iowa maybe, although not as precise. The quadrille really has a nice, precise, deep bass, which isn't pushed forward just like most others do. So for example, the Exos 9, the Copenhagen, which also has a slight bass boost, and also the Harman Kardon Go Play, and all of those slightly boost this very low, low bass at about 60 hertz, and the quadrille doesn't seem to do this. Next, let's check out one more very, I don't know, kind of modern track, and then we are finished, I think. Yeah, of course you could still hear that the Iowa sounded more powerful in the bass, but the quadrille really has a nicely balanced sound signature. It really sounds, I don't know, like a small hi-fi speaker even, although not as hi-fi as the Helsinki. For this it is simply missing the real treble definition, but still I think the speaker is really great sounding. In my first video I really was unfair to the speaker because I said it sounds hollow, it has way too much upper bass, but actually after having heard it for about, now it's maybe an hour, um, it really is a nice sounding speaker, it sounds great. On higher levels it is um, yeah, very good sounding, keeps most of its bass, never sounds out of control, doesn't have any distortion, no bass port noises, has nice deep bass, which isn't pushed forward, depends on your taste, so maybe you like some nice deep bass rumble from the Copenhagen, the Iowa or the Go Play, or you maybe really enjoy this kind of sophisticated but still powerful deep bass from the Breeze 2 here. Also treble is very nice, although not as clear as on the Helsinki here. 
um, but still it's good enough, doesn't sound as uh, covered as the Copenhagen and also the mids are very clean sounding, especially um, with modern music it really shines, has a nice balanced character, um, character, almost like some kind of studio monitor, so it doesn't always sound as beautiful as the others and as tuned, but it really sounds honest and really nice all the time, um, yeah. I don't know, uh, on every volume level. So on 80% volume, it sounds great on 50% volume and on 100% volume. Of course, under this, I wouldn't really recommend it. So if you are looking for a good sounding speaker for lower levels, you should rather look for, I don't know, FIFA Helsinki or even B and OA1. But if you want to have a small party, you should, of course, go for the Breeze. If you want to make a huge party, you should go with the Iowa as it is simply much louder. The Iowa was playing at 40% and this one at 80%. But of course, the Iowa also is much bigger. Um, so overall, I have to say, I can only recommend the speaker. You will be seeing way more videos, maybe even comparing it against the Klipsch KMC3, the Audio Pro T10 or the Zeppelin Wireless. You can simply write in the comments what you want to see. And of course, um, also a review is coming up of this as it just is a very nice speaker. They really have done a nice job with this one. And I really enjoy the sound just because it sounds so balanced. First, you have to get used to it. But um, if you have heard it for some time and you tried it with all of your tracks, you notice that it always gives a very nice result and isn't only track specific, although I would definitely recommend it for modern music as it simply has this nice um, deep bass kick, which isn't boosted, but always there, especially on high levels. It doesn't lose any bass, no compression, no artifacts, no distortion. And on max volume, it is about as loud as a Copenhagen or even 5% louder which is about, I don't know, 20% louder than a Go Play. So um, it is a very impressive speaker. And especially for this kind of money, it isn't even that bad. Most people say, oh my God, it's $450, so much money. But actually, if you take a look at other speakers, which are almost twice the price, like the Copenhagen, it can easily keep up or even beat those. So if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like or subscribe to the channel to see many more videos. Until then, have a great time and bye-bye.